Hello! In this video, you'll learn how to search PubMed for scholarly articles on a particular topic. What is PubMed? PubMed is a free resource supporting the search and retrieval of biomedical and life science literature with the aim at improving health both globally and personally. This database contains more than 32 million citations and abstracts of biomedical literature. PubMed usually does not include full text of journal articles. However, there are ways that you can search for full text within the database. PubMed's version of the full text database is PubMed Central, but you can search either of these and filter by full text as needed. PubMed is maintained by the National Center for Biotechnology Information. To access PubMed from the Jenks Library, go to the library homepage at gordon.edu library. On the homepage, scroll down to the blue Search the Library section. Click on the Databases tab, and then click on the link View All Databases. This presents you with a list of all of the databases accessible to you at Jenks Library. Click on P to filter the list by letter, and then find PubMed in the database list. You'll notice we have two links for PubMed, just regular PubMed and PubMed Central. The only difference between the two is PubMed Central is the one that tries to connect you to full text articles right away. We're actually going to start by searching in the regular version of PubMed because they have a few different ways in which you can search. It's often a little bit more helpful when you're searching for information. Go ahead and click on the link to PubMed. When you open PubMed, you're looking at their search page. We'll start by entering in some search terms called keywords and we'll slowly filter our results after we start searching by these keywords. Let's say we were looking for research on how exercise or physical activity can help improve high blood pressure or hypertension. We're gonna break that down to some keywords. First, we're gonna start with our concept of exercise. We then wanna build in a synonym to our search. So we're gonna use the OR search operator, which says, give me this term exercise or another term physical activity. And notice as well that I'm wrapping physical activity in quotes. This is going to search physical activity as a phrase search, one whole unit, so that I get those two terms together. I'm then going to select my add button on the right, and you'll see it starts to pop it into this query box. Query is just another word for search. That's how we're actually building the search string that we want to search by to find some specific results. I'm then going to go back up to the enter a search term box and type in my next keywords high blood pressure, and I'm doing the same thing again. I'm wrapping that term in quotes so that we're getting this as a phrase, or hypertension. Notice this time my add box is actually changed to the search operator and. This is actually telling me that I want to add into my query box this string of keywords, high blood pressure or hypertension, in an and search. And that's going to allow me to find articles that are discussing both the concept of exercise and the concept of high blood pressure. If we click on this little arrow next to the and box, we can see that there are other ways in which we could add this to our search. We could use the or boolean search operator or the not search operator. Right now, I want articles that are about both of these concepts, so it makes sense to add them using the AND search operator. Now we can see in my query box that we've started to construct a search string. We want to first search by either of my OR terms and then connect them together so we get articles about both these concepts. I want to go ahead and click search. So right now we're looking at a pretty large set of results. We get over 27,000 results. Because remember, the purpose of PubMed is that it's a citation or an abstract database. It's searching across all kinds of literature regardless of whether we have full text access or not. So before we start looking at our results, we're going to apply some limiters. Your list of limiter options are located in the left column. One limiter that might be helpful to set is text availability. We're going to check off free full text and full text. So now we've dropped down to about a little over 9,000 results that we actually have immediate access to. If you scroll down, you can see there are further limiting options that might be helpful. Another one is article type. And if you click into the additional filters options at the bottom of the column, you'll see that there's a lot more article types that you can choose from. Let's say we wanted to find clinical trials or other types of trials that show that there was actually research that was conducted. We're going to grab clinical trial, all these different phase clinical trials, controlled clinical trial, and we'll start with that. We'll click show to add them to our list of possible article types that we can select. Now I can grab all of these and continue to filter my results. 
we've taken that list of 9,000 articles and dropped it down to about 1,000 articles. Additional filtering options that may be useful is publication date. Say you only wanted information that was in the last five years, you can filter that. Notice as well, when we start to filter by publication date, this date range at the top changes how it shows you which year range you selected. This date range is actually really neat. If we click on this little expand button, we can see uh, where in the past history of this article, when was the first article published that was discussing these particular terms. So that's at this little range here. So we have back to 1970. And then we can also come over here and hover over each of the, the year slices and see which year actually produced the most literature on this particular topic. And we can see that in 2017 and 2015, 104 articles were published on this. So we were seeing a spike in those years on that interest. Let's go back and drag our little date range picker back to the last five years and we'll collapse that date range. Okay, so we've got several filtering options now and we've taken that initial list of 27,000 and reduced it down to 418. That's a pretty good number to begin with. So now what I'm doing is just scrolling through my results here and I'm looking at the blue title links to see what jumps out at me from the titles of the articles or there any ones that seem like something that I want to look at in a little bit more detail. Let's click on the second one down that's a randomized control trial. Click on the blue title link to jump to the article's record. Here you can learn more about it, such as the title, the contributing authors, the journal that it comes from, that's usually listed at the top here. And then we also get to this abstract. Uh, the abstract can tell you whether it was an actual primary study that was conducted, as well as some results of the study so that you can determine whether this is relevant for your research. Additionally, if we scroll down on this page, PubMed also helps connect you to some similar articles based on your search criteria. And at the very bottom of the page, it shows you how many other articles have actually cited this particular article. This can also be really useful in determining whether or not an article that you found is a substantial one that's contributed to a lot of other research in the field. We can see this article has been cited by five, and given that it was published in 2018, that's pretty good. To get connected to the full text of this article, use the links under the full text header on the right hand side. Either of these will work, but I actually see one that's listed to PubMed Central. Remember that's PubMed's version of a full text database. So I'm to go ahead and click on that one. Uh, this jumps me out to the article's landing page in PubMed Central and I can click on uh, download the article in whatever format I'd like under the formats header. I'm going to grab the PDF and there it is. We could download it, save it, do whatever we'd like. Um, coming back to our search page here, you can save searches if you'd like, email them to yourself. Or over here, you can actually choose the way in which you are filtering the results. Um, by default, it's always going to display the best match, but you could choose to sort by publication date. So it's going to show you the most recent articles first. And then down at the bottom here, if you wanted to reset any of these filters, say you looked for clinical trials and now you're ready to uh, maybe look for review articles, you could click the reset button. It cleared everything that we've selected. So we're back to that 27,000 results. I'm going to put my full text limiters back and this time I'm going to grab my article type filters for review and systemic review. So pretty easy to toggle back and forth between which article types you would like to look for. If you have any questions about how to search the PubMed database for full text articles on a particular topic, please ask Jenks.